As you're discovering, Photoshop is insanely powerful. We've only scratched the surface of its capabilities. Let's hop into Photoshop and look at this exercise again to see what else we can learn. Yeah. I've picked out a handful of style frames for this exercise. Let's take a look at them. This first one is for Corinsol, and I think it's doing an excellent job at finishing everything off. It's got a nice composition, and I just love all the hand-done elements in here. All of these little glow streaks coming off with the texture, the hand-brushed look is awesome. The added little effect of the glow off of Joey's head is awesome. And even these little accent marks that uh, this designer incorporated into the text treatment is really great too. And I mean, look at that background texture. It's beautiful. I love that grittiness. It just feels so unique. And there are layers and layers of elements underneath all of that texture to add all of this depth to the background so it's not just a flat background. In fact, let's just open up the background and look at all of these adjustment layers. If I turn all of these off, look how flat that background becomes. And then there's even more. There's a glow layer here. There's a texture layer. This designer put a lot of effort into all of the layering of this background to give it so much dimension. And I love the way that it came out. Now, one thing that I think could use some help is the way that the photo of Joey has been stylized. It's a little bit too purple for my taste. I think, yes, it does go along with the brand, but it just seems unnatural. He looks a little bit too much like a, almost like a blueberry. So I would come to the photo filter here and just turn down the density. It doesn't have to be much. You know, it was at 30. Maybe we'll back it off to something like 18. And just that simple difference going from here to here brings back some of that flesh tone back in. Another thing uh, that this designer did was used a curves layer to add some contrast, which I think is a great idea. But because of the way that curves works, it's adding in some saturation around you know, his eyes here that maybe isn't that flattering. It's oversaturating some of those reds. So instead of leaving the curves adjustment layer on the normal blending mode, a really great trick is just changing this to a luminosity all the way at the bottom. And that way it's only affecting the brightness or the luminosity of the pixels and not the hue or saturation. So if I turn that off and back on, you can see what that's doing now compared to, compared to before where that was making everything just a tad more saturated. I know it's very subtle, but it does make a difference. So with those two little adjustments, I'd say this is ready to go. If I go to my history panel and just go back to the beginning, you'd see I, I barely changed anything. It's really just stuff to do with the, the way that this photo was treated. But overall, this is just an excellent example of finishing off this project. All right, let's go to our next example, which is for the ear shots. And I think this designer just did an awesome job of having fun and trying some unique things. There wasn't a lot in this brief regarding the design of the brand. It was a very simple, straightforward color palette of this red and white, which could make it difficult to figure out what to put in the background. Because if you put the same red, then you're going to lose that logo, uh, or at least the, the box part of it and the text down here. So I think that what this designer did for the background was pretty genius, using this picnic table uh, tablecloth texture in the background is a lot of fun. It's very playful. And on top of all that, it fits with the colors of the brand. So really clever thinking there. And I think this worked pretty well. On top of that, the designer colored these headphones to match the brand. And I just want to jump into the smart object here to show you just how much work this designer put into getting these to look so natural. If you remember, the stock photo just looked like this. It was a white pair of headphones. So first, the designer cut it out, obviously. He turned these layers off one by one. So we've got our base headphone layer with a color overlay. And that's how this designer got them to turn red. So if we go to that color overlay layer style, you can see that they changed the, the blend mode from normal, which would just make it a solid red, to color burn, which blends into that headphones a little bit more naturally. So that's our base layer. On top of that, we've got a levels that kind of flattens everything out. It makes those highlights a little less intense. The shadows not quite so dark. And if you remember, levels is a lot like curves. It just uses sliders rather than that point curve like curves does. On top of that, we've got another layer that's this isolated white part of the foam uh, part of the ear cups. So we've got no color uh, overlay on that, and it's just masked off so that we just see that portion of it. And then we've got one final layer, which is the controls, which if you look right here, 
this is what it is. You can see that the color overlay was making that black dial red, but the designer caught that and just made another layer with just that portion uh, isolated and took off the color overlay so it stayed black. So you can see that if you just put in a little bit of extra effort, you pay attention to the little details, adding in all of these effects and layers can really help sell what you're trying to do and make something look really natural. So great job there. Let's take a look at the next example. Now what I love about this design is that the parsley or that garnishing that you see on this stock photo was actually removed from the turkey and that is just an incredible job. It looks totally seamless and I think it does a great job of making sure that you're not distracted by any extra elements. I don't think it's absolutely necessary that you would need to remove that but it definitely helps isolate that turkey so that there is no, no other distracting elements to it and I think this designer just did an excellent job of removing that stuff. Uh, also, the headphones really look like they're on that turkey. If we take a look at how this was done, we've got our headphones layer right here, and then the turkey layer is what's actually masked. So if I turn that mask off, you can see how that is just completely been taken away. Everything behind the turkey has been taken away so it fits into those headphones very nicely. But on top of that, we have a bunch of color correction layers and all of these are to add in shading here to make it look like the turkey is actually sitting within those headphones and you can see how dramatically different it looks with and without those so that is just an excellent job at adding a lot of depth to this photo to make it more convincing like it was actually sitting there on the turkey and I believe this designer even adjusted the headphone colors as well there you go yep just another great job this time using curves to adjust the color of that section of the headphones matching the brand a little bit more closely so the way this was done was by switching between the red green and blue channels and then lifting the reds and then pulling out green and pulling out blue so just another way to be able to adjust colors like I said you can do this kind of thing many different ways inside of Photoshop and this designer just happened to use curves all right, great job there. Let's look at the last ear shots example. This is another great example of removing that garnish on top of the turkey. It looks totally seamless. And if I jump in here, we can even take a look at how it was done a little bit. So this is before with that garnish and then without. So just an excellent job. You really would never know that was there if you hadn't seen the original photo. So excellent work there. Another great job of making those headphones look like they're right there on top of the turkey, like they were actually there when this was photographed. And some really excellent shading. Again, adding in some depth, making this look more realistic, and keeping it a very simple, clean design. Now, one thing that is bothering me a little bit about this design is just how sterile it is. And this is kind of the dilemma with this project. The, the branding guide only gave you two colors, the, the red and the white, and both of those are used in that logo. So if I were to turn off the white background, most of that logo disappears. So this is a case where I might deviate a little bit from the branding just to make something that looks a little bit more interesting and like I said, less sterile. So why don't we try changing the background up just a little bit. I'm going to turn off the white background and leave that red and then add another solid layer above it. So I'm just going to press Command J to duplicate that layer and then let's change this to being something brighter. So brighter and maybe even a little bit more orange. So something like this and we can always adjust this in a little bit but I want to add a vector mask to this and I'm going to make this using a circle and make sure that I'm on a path make it nice and big something like that centered up and then add a vector mask so there we go then I'll go into my properties and feather it out quite a bit and then maybe even shrink it down so what I basically want to do is just create this bright spot behind the turkey and then hopefully I can adjust the colors enough to where you can see the background part of the logo no problem I think I want to make that color in the background just a little bit more pale I don't want to take away too much from the branding basically just brightening up that spot and then maybe I'll make this a little bit bigger that way I can feather it out just a bit more and really have it spread out behind the logo so that you can really see that logo nice and clear. All right, that looks good. Then I think I'm just going to change the text color from this red to their white. And then I'm going to take a chance on this logo and I'm going to go into that smart object 
I'm going to grab this text down here. And I want to make sure that I just grab the text. So there we go. We've got just the red. And I'm going to change that to being white. That way, we can see it on top of that red background. Make sure I get everything. There we go. Save that. Jump back into Photoshop. And now you can see that text. Like I said, it's a risk because that is their logo. They might have a problem with that. Or they might not. And they just forgot to put something like that in the brand guide, which is actually something that could happen in the real world. So with those two adjustments, this now feels a lot less sterile. Like I said, it has some color to the background this nice vignette that's bringing your eye to the center and the logo is still visible but it's not what's drawing your attention and in fact I might even make that just a little bit smaller again that's a risky choice brands like seeing their logo nice and big but the focus should be on the product the headphones so I'm okay making it a little bit smaller but there you go now you can see we went from this white background to this gradient background that looks kind of almost like a spotlight and I think that just adds a little bit more flavor to this piece all right, let's take a look at some bing bong examples. This one I think is working really well. I love the composition. I love the photo that this designer chose because she's just looking in the direction of the text. So you naturally want to follow her eye line to see that, uh, that line of text. I think that's great. I love the way that this designer stacked the text inside of this element. My biggest issue is how it's competing with the background. The foreground elements are a little bit hard to see when you look at them on top of that background. But there's some really easy things we can do to fix that. So first, I'm just going to select that background. It is a smart object. So I can apply an effect to it. So I'm just going to come up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And I'm going to just add a slight blur to that background, something like this. This not only makes everything easier to see, but it also removes any kind of issues with what's on the billboards in the background scene. If I turn that off, can see we've got like Iron Man here or Captain America something like that and a lot of other brands that would probably be a red flag for advertising this particular company they're not going to want to see other companies logos in the background so just blurring it out like that serves two purposes it makes it easier to focus on the foreground elements and it gets rid of any kind of copyright issues with other companies logos and that's really all I would change on this style frame. I think everything else is working really great. The composition is very nice, like I said, and I think the type is laid out great. So let's move on to our last example and just talk a little bit about what's going on here. So we've got some very interesting type. Again, this is a great photo. Uh, the, the model is looking in the direction of the tagline, which is great. It leads your eye that direction. I think the composition is actually working fairly well here. And this designer did blur out the background so that you can't see any of those logos. So already, great job there. Some of the issues that I have, though, are how much space this tagline is taking up and the use of that graphical element, the eye here, how much it's used. I think it's a little bit overdone, especially on this logo. I don't think the client is going to be happy seeing their logo contained within that graphical element because it's again repeated here. And these are so compressed that it's a little bit of a stretch to say that this is the same graphical element that we see in that eye. So the first thing I'm going to do is just grab those shapes that are behind that Bing Bong logo, which are right here. And I'm just going to group them and turn them off so we don't see them anymore. Then I'm going to change the color overlay from the black color to the white color, which, if I remember, was not pure white. Uh, yeah, it's this color right here. So I'm going to copy that hex code, go into the color overlay, and then make it white, uh, or the off-white color. And that way it's easier to see. And then I'm going to line it up with the left side of this text. Now this is competing with the background. It's too hard to see. So I'm going to grab both of those and just bring them down into a spot where it's clearly readable on top of that photo. All right, so there we took care of that issue. Now we see this repeated element again uh, in the foreground, nice and big, but then again in the background. And I think, again, this is just a little bit too much going on. I don't think we need the secondary version of that element. So these three layers right here, I think, are the ones that I'm seeing overlaid on top of each other. So again, I'm just going to group those elements and turn that group off and then work on the main element in the background. I think, first of all, I want to reposition this text a little bit. Instead of having it on three lines, we have so much of this empty space over here. I think it would make more sense if the, uh, the first two words were on the same line. So I'm just going to delete this layer and then type out life 
on this layer so that it's all the same size and then reposition the text a little bit just so it fits together a little bit more nicely. Now we do have some readability issues here, but I'll take care of that in a second. First, I think I just want to scale it down a little bit and then resize these elements to fit it. And it looks like these shapes were actually created using a series of adjustment layers. So what I want to do is convert this to a single shape layer. So what I'll do is make a new solid color and I want it to be that same off-white color right there. And then I'll just move it down below and then transfer this mask onto this one. I'll delete the layer mask. Then I can hide this one. Then I can grab this path, drag it down. And I don't want to replace, so actually I'm going to need to copy it and then paste. And now they're both on the same layer. Then I can grab this one, copy, and paste it as well. And there we go. Now I've got all of those adjustment layers off and I've got my single shape all in one shape layer. Now I just want to scale it down so it fits this text a little bit more and then just modify the paths a little bit more. I want to grab this shape first. Oof, I keep grabbing the wrong layer. Here we go. Grab this one right here and just scale it off to the side. Now that was a live shape. That's why I didn't have to worry about the corners deforming. Um, you can adjust this and the corners are going to be preserved. So that would not happen if it wasn't a live shape. All right, so I'm going to leave that one there and then grab this one, maybe push it off to the side a little bit and put this one pretty much right behind her head, making sure that these are pretty much evenly spaced out between this, this shape and this shape. So something like that. And now I think I'm just going to move the entire thing over so that her hand is being framed right there between those two and then maybe space these out a little bit more. because I like how this one goes behind her head, but I also like how her hand goes right in between there. So I'm going to move them right about there. Okay, so that looks good, but obviously this is too hard to read. We're not seeing that, that clearly enough. So what I want to do is treat the background a little bit differently. So let's just take a look at what we have. We've got our Gaussian blur. We've got a tagline mask. So okay, that's actually a great element. I'm going to move that down with the text. That just darkens the background so it makes it even easier to read that text. Then we've got the photo filter, which is nice. It uses the, the branding color, but I think we can do something a little bit more interesting that's going to make it even easier to focus on the foreground. So I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to add a new gradient all the way at the top. And I want these to be the brand colors. So I'll leave it as it is for now. But what I want to do is bring in that brand uh, guide so I can have those colors. And I want to use the same gradient as what we've got on the logo, which is uh, from the lighter orange to the darker red. So I'm going to sample those two colors using my gradient layer. So making sure that I have that selected and then double clicking on it, going into the gradient and using my eyedropper to select the lighter color, going to the darker color and making sure it's at 100% not fading out. So I've got that and then I'm going to adjust the angle so that it's going uh, from top to the bottom. So I guess negative 90 is what I want. Click OK and move that down to the, uh, the back of the layer. So Command Shift left bracket sends it to the back and then I'm going to grab the city layer and I'm going to change its blending mode from normal to multiply. And that's just going to blend it into that background a lot better. Now, it's still pretty dark, so I'm going to just drop it down to, say, 50%. Now, combining that lower transparency with the Gaussian blur so that it's easier to focus on the foreground elements and that color gradient, we've matched the brand. We've made everything else easier to see. And I think this style frame is now working a whole lot better. So let's take a look at where we were at the beginning and where we are now. So just making those adjustments, keeping the same basic composition, I think really brings the focus to that tagline and cleans up that background so it's easier to see everything in the foreground. You're going to be working with type on just about every project you ever do. It's important to get a good grasp on the basics so that when you get deeper into design, you'll already have some good habits. Let's look at some of the typography assignments from your session.